This podcast is brought to you by HairTransplantNetwork.com. The Hair Transplant Network is the largest hair restoration community created by patients to help you find the best hair loss treatments and hair transplant surgeons based on results. For those of you guys who don't know, this is Dr. Barguthi. He has been doing the only human trial that I know of, of vertiporfin um, in, in terms of uh, hair transplant surgery. I believe you're on what day fifty five of the of the study. Uh, no, we're approaching the four month mark actually next week or in ten days. Wow, four months. So so far, I I asked you on YouTube, um, you know, what would you rate the treatment so far, uh, from one to ten? Okay, so uh, as I said, uh, maybe uh, it wasn't clear. So we've had two endpoints uh, for this study. One is the quality of scar tissue or scar regeneration or healing uh, of normal skin, and also um, a hair regeneration. So um, at this point, I think scarring is still lagging behind. So I would uh, probably say there is a 20, 25% uh, um, observational improvement in scar tissue so i would still rate that at uh, probably four or five out of ten uh, but in terms of hair regeneration we've been uh, quite um, uh, impressed with uh, with the <clears throat> progress so far um, uh, at three months we've started noticing some um, maybe villus or uh, fine hairs in in some of the scar tissue um, and that has progressed at three months to, to showing uh, uh, quite thicker and more terminal hairs in, in most sites uh, across the test areas. So um, for the hair regeneration part, I must say it's, it's still early because we have to wait for uh, the end of the, the trial period. Um, but I would be uh, uh, rating it at maybe six or seven out of ten at this stage. And I just want to show the audience here. This is the the update that you posted on the Hair Restoration Network. So this yes, is, this is the fifty six days, fifty six days, and this is zero point two four milligrams. Um, so yes. this milligrams. So these yes. are the different dosages. So if you look here, that's a tiny little hair. If you look at the control site in the same area, it's completely void of any hair. Now I know there was a lot of talk saying, well, what if this is a um, telogen hair because there was one? Here there seems to be at least uh, three hairs, right? If I'm not mistaken, mm -hmm. that looks like three yeah. hairs. Um, here we go, 0.32T. Um, so I believe this is where the area is, right? Yeah, where, where yeah. The extractions right. are. So again, that seems to be three hairs growing in that, in that area um, compared to no hairs in the 0.32T uh, C uh, section. And then we go down to 0.4T, which is the highest dosage. Uh, so see here, one really thick hair, uh, looks like two hairs thick growing, but smaller in, in the sides. Whereas in the control section, it's completely void of any hair. Um, so, you know, take me through that uh your your you know your discovery so far i think i'm very 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 excited and i think i speak for for everyone in the hair transplant community to see results like this um i think it's hard to say that this is now a telogen fluke um in my opinion you wouldn't see that in three different sections you know at three different dosages 0.24 0.32 and 0.4, every single side that was treated with vertiporfin has hair growing from it. I could see if it was one, you know, one side that had one single hair growing from it, then I could say, okay, maybe that's intelligent hair. This seems to be that the hair has regenerated. Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, the three month, that's when we first uh, observed any possibility of, of new hair. Um, uh, regeneration. So at three months or at about 56 days, uh, sorry, uh, yeah, at about 56 days was the first time we've, we've noticed that. So um, uh, two months. Um, so yes, we, we kept the 
option of, of having a telogen hair um, uh, formation. Uh, the only thing is, if you look at those pictures, uh, you would see that um, even at the lower dosages, there was some activity if you if you zoom in quite uh, in into the pictures. Yes, I think this is the second month right here. Uh, yes, correct. If you go up, uh, maybe look at the other doses. The other, uh, all right, let me. Let me go. Okay, here we go. So second month. This is. Okay, so 56 days. Yeah. So I don't know if it's too clear here, but if you go into the T area, you could uh -huh. possibly see some uh, a suspicion of, of you know, uh, uh, hairs. Uh, see, uh, the point three two, for example, you could see yeah. here a very fine hair. Uh, in the T section as well, uh, yeah. so that's one. You know, we we thought it looked like in in all three um, test areas that there was some activity going on. Um, and yeah, you can see for sure yeah. right there. You could see, um, and that's the point four was was a bit thicker. Uh, yeah, uh, the hair itself, um, and also a month after then things became a bit more accelerated and, and maybe clearer um, yeah. in terms the, of growth in the three sections and also in um you know across and in different sites so the increased uh, um uh, tendency uh, across the punch sites then the 0 0.4 which yeah Right here, this 0 0.4 mm -hmm. has been growing for quite a while, but now you're seeing these two small follicles growing on the side here. Um, yeah. And and so that to me is is very telling that we have something that is definitely regenerating growth. The question is, how long are those hairs going to last? Are they going to grow to full maturity? Um, you know, these are the questions that remain unanswered but i guess if i were to ask you for your opinion so far on this treatment you know um mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. are you fairly confident that these hairs will grow into normal you know normal hair follicles like in the pig study and the mice study that they grew all normal dermal appendages and they were normal hair follicles um to be honest uh, it's hard to tell uh, i think we have to wait uh, a bit longer and my, I know we've been discussing this before uh, with a few others and, and in different groups, uh, but I think uh, I'm leaning towards uh, doing histological sections of, of some of these sites, um, provided uh, our very helpful volunteer agrees to it. Um, mm -hmm. He's been, he's been uh, I must say, uh, excellent in his follow-ups and his... Um, you know, uh, assistance and punctuality with, with uh, follow-ups. Um, I'm looking at, uh, you know, taking control and trial or test area um, histological sections of these hairs and also the scar tissue just to see if there is any sort of um, a, a histological uh, variation uh, between both because this could help us in adjusting any dosing that might improve the scarring uh, uh, um, results, uh, per se, mm. and also to identify uh, the type of hair histologically. So, you know, it, it could just uh, exactly pinpoint whether it's telogen or villous hair. Um, mm. So you're going to take it one step further to really, so there's no question, uh, because of course we we know that people have, have come out and said, well, you know, these hairs may be intelligent. So now you're going to take the study one step further to make sure that these hairs are actually uh, hairs that are regenerating and not telogen hairs. Although, I yeah, would absolutely. Say based on, and um, I mean, it's 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 you have to to you have to give uh, um, such things the the the. the uh, the value um, that it deserves. Um, so we can't just come up and say these are hairs that have grown. We don't, we can't say this scar looks better than this. Um, you know, just 
by looking at it. Uh, yeah. So I think we can't do biopsies on all the sites, but I think if we identify areas that are been that have been uh, excised or wow. punched um, and have hairs in it, uh, if we take a biopsy of this and a biopsy of a normal scar in a control area, then we could have a better um, uh, objective assessment as well. So um, it wasn't in the original protocol because we didn't know what we might be facing uh, or dealing with, but I think it's very important for um, uh, everyone to to you know have objective evidence histologically. Absolutely. Now I'm going to ask you one more question that I think um, I, I I'm very excited. So we know next year the, this year there's going to be an ISHRS conference in Panama. Obviously, I think your study will be too too early to present yeah, there. I'm going. I'm going. Um, and and hopefully we can have more uh, doctors involved and maybe have some discussions okay. about this uh, and, and dividing you know protocols uh, among people who are interested now my question would be next year the next ishrs conference of 2023 you will you would have had at least a full year over a year now with this new protocol that you're going to be implementing are you planning on presenting this being a presenter yeah. in the conference and i think i mean this would be amazing. I don't know. It's asking too much, but if if uh, if the patient would be willing to to fly out there, I don't know. Maybe we can talk to them. Um, I'm sure people would be willing to crowdsource to fund his tr plane trip. And uh, I'm planning on going there and doing like a bit of a conference myself for the Hair Restoration Network. I would mm -hmm. love it if you were to be a guest speaker there and have this present this presentation for you know for the public to see um i think this is going to be something that could potentially change the hair transplant industry you mentioned earlier uh in the podcast that you rated it four out of four to five for scarring so that's that to me is pretty profound um to say that it you know it, it even though one one could say you know a five out of ten is it's it's okay, but I mean, to get your scoring 50% better is huge. That's huge. Uh, absolutely. Uh, I mean, that's why I, I was also looking at, you know, doing more objective uh, analysis of the scar because uh, we always have to have our uh, bias set uh, aside. So, um, again, you know, you have different areas, you have the temple, the temporal area, you know being more a uh, finer skin or, or um, uh, more sensitive to extraction uh, as opposed to the middle section. So uh, I think getting histological evidence would help us quantify this improvement uh, better, uh, maybe also with a bit of time because it was uh, delayed. Like the first few weeks and months, we could see clearly that vertiporfin has a delayed look to the punch mm -hmm. sites you know they weren't sort of healing uh, in the same rate as the control areas and um uh, you know they were sort of lagging behind in, in discoloration and also in in the tissue quality and after that what i notice is the vertiporfin injected sites are more pigmented and that's actually been helpful in identifying some of these punch sites and even the ones with the hair inside or coming out of. So uh, if you look at the, the pictures, you could see that most vertiporfin injected or the test areas are darker. They're, they're a bit darker. They're more pigmented. Mm -hmm. uh, you could see that the punch site is a bit darker. Um, uh, and, and that would be uh, um, a helpful sort of um, a, a, retesting area because it was helping us in the follow-up to identify these areas uh, i'm going to the ishrs this year uh, i would love to present it next year if we have even uh, the year results and also uh, a case series possibly because uh, i'm going to talk to you about other uh, projects or um, uh, uses of vertiporfin that we're gonna hopefully start mm -hmm. soon 
Um, so we're gonna test it in several different protocols as well. And now a word from our sponsors. Zion's topical finasteride with siloxy system gel was designed to target finasteride locally on the scalp while limiting the absorption in the bloodstream. Thousands of men refused to take finasteride because they got bad side effects. I would know I'm one of them. But now there's a safer alternative that's just as effective. Check the link in the description to get more information. Wow. So if we have a case series, um, that would be something um, that would definitely uh, I'll be interested in presenting. That would be that would be amazing. I mean, I, I'm trying to, uh, you know, really set this up um, to be a really open conference. Generally, every conference has been for surgeons and other surgeons, never really for the public or for patients. So I think it's important to have something presented to patients so that they can get mm -hmm. educated as well. So that's what I hope Correct. to do. Um, somebody asked if the four month results. Uh, the histological results will be presented in the four month update. Uh, I don't think so. I think what I'll what I'll do is I'll wait for at least six months just to give the scarring uh, um, mechanism time for uh, healing or for full re uh, you know for full uh, not full but I mean for more maturity of of the scar tissue. So. Uh, we know most scars, they don't mature by, by uh, even that time, but um, it would give us more time to maybe have a, a good comparative um, uh, analysis. Fantastic. Now, um, I know you, I, I want to respect your time, so I'm gonna, we're going to wrap this up in a few minutes, but I just, before mm -hmm. you go, I want to ask you, um, you know, in summary, how would you describe the... Uh, the the study so far um would you say so far that it's you're, you're pleased with the results it's the, it's inconclusive at the moment uh, how would you how would you summarize it um i'm definitely pleased uh, to be honest so far and um that's why i'm, I'm actually looking at expanding um mm. the existing protocol um and also to to include vertiporfin in other several um and sort of protocols as well uh, of use. So um, maybe uh, I'll touch up on that um, by saying we're, we're most likely going into uh, testing it in recipient areas um, just to see specific uh, areas that are completely bold uh, and how they will react to, to injection uh, or, or to, to, to adding vertiporfin to that specific area and um, i'm looking to do and i also have a a, a volunteer for um a full F fue uh, using vertiporfin um just logistically it was supposed to be happening in september but um he's out of the country so i'm just uh, waiting to reschedule that uh, once they come back and um, and also we're looking either myself or with uh, um uh, uh, anyone involved uh, to do a small classical, uh, not like a small FUT area or a small mm. in linear scar uh, injection. Uh, yeah. So these would be along with trialing different dosages. So so maybe the dosing might we might hold on on changing any dose until we have histological guidance. Uh, about the scar tissue or the quality of scarring in the area so we can know whether we need to focus entirely on a higher dosage or an, an increased concentration um, but uh, these are the these are all in the pipeline so uh, we had a question here um, would he try multiple injections as a part of a new protocol and would be used something potentially similar to to a patch so that vert could potentially slowly release over a period of time. Um, so I, I believe he's saying, you know, like uh, slow release. Uh, yeah, so. slow release. Is that something that uh, maybe it, is, it is? It is. It is. It is. It is a possibility, and it does make sense. And I know in the in the in the animal studies, multiple injections weren't um, more effective. So um, that may steer us away from you know um 
unnecessary repetitive injections. Slow release might be an effective way, especially when we have multiple uh, or a broad area of extraction, like in FUE. Uh, so that might be something as part of a dressing um, post yeah. op, and also and also we use to cover it from direct sunlight. So um, uh, that might be a, a, a good way to go around uh, achieving both things. Um, yes, so everything you know, all of these ideas are are are, are possible. Um, we just have to go by which one would be more likely to yield. Uh, more conclusive results uh, in a shorter time period. Uh, I think definitely if if histology shows us more promising, uh, you know, scarring or growth, then we know that a single injection is is probably enough. Maybe adjusting the dose, maybe adjusting the concentration, um, or maybe we don't need to 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 change the distance or the interval of injection. Um, so uh, I'm hoping that it would give us um, some more um, uh, clues. Yeah, I'm, I'm super excited. Um, thank you so much, Dr. Barkuthi. Just for those of you who want to check out uh, the latest updates, go to the Hair Restoration Network, Vertiporfin Update. It's pinned in the network, and Dr. Barkuthi has been updating it every time there is updates. Also, uh, Dr. Barguthi will be working with me to send me updates. Um, and when I get them, I will release them. And if you guys want to reach out to Dr. Barguthi for any questions or inquiries, uh, I believe it is info at vertexhair.com. You Correct. can also DM him at vertexhair here on Instagram. Um, and there's a link in the profile to his physician profile. You can also go ahead and send him your pictures of your hair if you're interested in getting a hair transplant or if you're in the area and maybe you want to participate in the study um, and you're willing to, you know, to do it, that's something to consider as well. Uh, thank you so much, Dr. Barkuthi. Um, thank you, Melvin. I'm super excited. Hopefully next year we'll have a conference and we'll live stream it and, uh, you know, possibly you'll have the patient there. I don't know. Um, I would yes, be definitely, possibility. yeah, definitely. Yeah. I would definitely be willing to, you know, uh, maybe try to source it to, to fund his, his ticket to go there. Um, and it would be awesome. Uh, thank you so no much, problem. Dr. Barguti. Uh, thank hey, you very you much. Have a great night. Take it easy. You too. Thanks. Thanks a lot, Melvin. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Take care.